The end of 2016 is in sight, and here's where we go from here. Check out the Daily Motion page for the Christmas classics from Christmas of 2006. There will also be one last thing related to the holiday humbug season on the YouTube channel as well. And then, Beyond 10 Years needs to begin sooner rather than later to continue the story with the computer systems and the hardware swapping. Things will definitely be interesting as this year draws to a close here on the Wacky World of Multimedia J. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And thanks for stopping by. Multimedia J Radio Style. Good morning, everybody. For many of you, Christmas and its assorted nonsense is over. I wish I were that lucky. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more nonsense coming up later today, and then I can finally rest easy and get back to the stuff I would want to be doing on this vacation. But uh, one more day to get through somehow, if the fates allow, as the song would go, and things like that. But there's a few loose ends that need to be tied up, lest anyone accuse me of picking and choosing what I've talked about related to Christmas. So let's talk about some of these odds and ends and move beyond all of this stuff, darn it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Multimedia J Radio Style for Monday, December 26th, 2016. You may have noticed that I've already taken my first step in putting Christmas into the history books for this year by using the holiday brass ensemble for the music instead of something that's a bit more recognizable as an actual Christmas carol. So keep a little bit of holiday stuff going, and uh, but at the same time move a little bit beyond, you know, joy to the world, silent night etc. And there will not be a song at the end of this like there was the last two times. It's going to more resemble a regular radio style segment as we wrap things up and I get ready for the family get together. Oh boy, this should be interesting. I got some more details on the, the family get together that's happening later today. Apparently the geniuses behind it who wanted to, everybody to eat at five o'clock when Hartford County already has a freezing rain warning <laughs> advisory, excuse me. Hartford County already is going to get some freezing rain this afternoon, but it's supposed to warm up tonight, so I'm hoping that even in the hills and the woods of where I'm going, that it won't get that cold out. Otherwise, it's going to be a pretty dicey drive home, and that will cap off the absolute disaster that is this plan. The 5 o'clock get-together is because there's some folks that have to work today, so want everyone to be able to get off work and head on over, and everybody can be together before they start opening presents again with this what people have done to Christmas. You know, bah humbug. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, please give me Christmas tide over this rubbish any day. Yeah, I'm probably going to be there early, and I'll, I might try to get out of there early, too. But uh, the stupid part now is that it's supposed to warm up after sunset, so it might actually be better for me if I wait and watch the nonsense unfold and all that beautiful, beautiful stuff. All right. There's one loose end that needs to be tied up that's been going around social media, and it's basically, I haven't stopped seeing it in my feeds on social media since, and that is the alleged 5,000-year-old nativity scene that was discovered in some cave somewhere that's been hammed up all the heck and just shows the pooled ignorance of the people that are trying to make this into some kind of thing. So basically, folks found a cave painting with a family, a baby, an animal and a star in the sky in some cave. And they're like, look, a nativity scene that predates the Christmas story by thousands of years. And his folks are like, oh, see, rip off, see, rip off. And those people have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> folks, if something in Christianity is not very original, that's par for the course we're not talking about like indeed like again a reference to D, &D cleric cast hammer of the gods big flash of light oh and then poof there's a religion no christianity developed out of judaism and depending on what church you go to if you visit one you might see some elements in the service or the liturgy left over from when the services were held in synagogues there really isn't much other than the christian gospel that is novel to the religion in the first place and nativity scenes of all things 
I mean, there's Christians that are picking apart nativity scenes. The InterVarsity Christian Fellowship actually sent around something on social media around the same time debunking the nativity scene. So are they in agreement? Well, no, it's called using your head and not reading your modern day viewpoint and all its biases into something historical like a cave painting. It's called an anachronism. But who pays attention to this stuff anymore? Well, that's the point. There are a lot of people out there that don't pay attention to this sort of stuff and get sucked into all this hysteria, which I'm sure that this this story is more news because it's happening now than it would have been just a couple of months ago. But no, anachronisms are anachronisms. And when studying history of any sort, the last thing that you want to do is read your 21st century viewpoint into a historical text or a historical work of art or anything from a previous era. It's inaccurate and actually quite dishonest to do so. Not even counting nativity scenes. If Christianity does something that's not very original or novel... It's nothing totally bizarre in the first place. I mean, the religion developed out of Judaism in the first century. There were times when there was a time in the early days of the early church when get togethers and services were still being held in synagogues. The first groups of Christians were Jewish Christians. And one of the first arguments in the early church was what to do with rituals like circumcision and the dietary laws. So we're talking about a we're talking about a world religion that evolved out of something else. It didn't just come out of nowhere. So if there are things in there that borrow from other stuff or that you've seen somewhere before, it's nothing too exciting unless you have an axe to grind. I can just off the top of my head, I can tell you in some churches, there's a sanctuary lamp, a big red candle hanging from the ceiling that's lit all the time when there's services going on. That is a holdover from a similar fixture in synagogues, except it wouldn't be a candle in a synagogue, probably more like a lamp, I think. And I actually have found some pictures of modern day synagogues that have sanctuary lamps and whatnot. There's other also elements of the of the ancient liturgy that actually are descended from parts of what would have happened in a synagogue in the first century. Like, for example, people having the scriptures read to them, singing psalms, praying collectively, things along those lines. That sort of stuff is not novel to this religion at all. Actually, even the New Testament leaves the door open for stuff that the Christians would not have all to themselves. Like morality, for example, and a sense of right and wrong, with the discussion about how the law is written on the hearts of even the Gentiles and people that were not part of the covenant of Moses as part of one of the early arguments about things in the church that made its way into the New Testament. Now, how about we move beyond the first century here? So about those nativity scenes where it's the end of the world if they're similar to something else that has existed in the world of art. So the history of the nativity scenes, nativity imagery is all over the map. I mean, you see some carvings and some ancient sarcophagus uh, coffins and things like that. You know, there's a varying history, but in terms of the formal scene near a church that is actually credited to St. Francis of Assisi, the 1200s, not exactly a super duper historical tradition. Now, is it (laughs) so? And actually the art form that the nativity is in terms of it usually has elements of it has shepherds, it has wise men, Mary, Joseph, a stable, baby Jesus, a few animals, da da da. The type of art form that that is, which, by the way, that's blending together Christmas and Epiphany, kind of like a a one-size-fits-all montage of various events and whatnot, this type of art form and what it is used for is nothing too original either. It's, um, the, now we, well, not even talking about the nativity here, but in the earlier centuries, the literacy rate was much lower. So the only way people could understand something like a belief system like this would be if they had a more audio-visual approach to it. They would go to the houses of worship and have the scriptures read to them or something like that. Other stuff would be told to them orally, and they'd be a lot better at remembering it than we are nowadays with our look-it-up generation. And at the same time, there is also paintings, pictures, other forms of art that provided a more audio-visual take on things to help folks remember stuff. And the nativity scene blends together elements of Christmas with elements of epiphany. Actually, when you think about all of the components that go into your average nativity scene and whatnot, it all goes together in a similar fashion to some of the montages out there for theater shows, books, movies, even early video games. I'm particularly thinking 
of early Atari games where the box art for a game would have all the key characters and key scenes from the game kind of blended together into one big montage and you wouldn't see anything like that anywhere in the game but it had basically it was a way of putting all the important stuff together on one thing for you to look at nativity scene similar very very similar and a matter of fact there are some elements of christmas and some elements of epiphany in there now i went with an orthodox icon for the picture for this discussion because i think it's a bit more christmassy than the nativity scenes that blend things together and uh, basically it's one big display that a church can if they really wanted to they could leave a nativity scene up for months technically now if you pass by a nativity scene and there are shepherds that's christmas but the wise men the star and stuff like that that's epiphany that's later so it's not an actual historical depiction it's kind of more of a visual cliff notes as it were and there's some stuff that might actually be completely out of place that are just added for you know mundane dress it up make it look more like what it is there's no animals mentioned in any of the gospel accounts the angels sang out in a field <laughs> So uh, if they wanted to be historically, if any church wanted to be historically accurate, they would not have angels in a manger display. They'd hang them up way the heck over far, far away and then have a few shepherds underneath. Oh, look, the shepherds are here. Hey, go to Bethlehem. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, it's it's more a matter of keeping all the key elements together. And if, say, a church did leave this up for all the way up until Lent, you're talking about December all the way to like February or so and not having to swap things out. And that's the kicker here. If they wanted to be accurate to the texts, they would have the Christmas elements around Christmas for a bit. Then they'd swap in the epiphany elements, which also mean changing the background, by the way. Uh, believe me, Jesus, Mary and Joseph didn't stay in that stable forever. Actually, it was it even a stable. Odds are maybe they were staying with Joseph's relatives and there maybe it was in a lower room in the house or something or where the animals were kept. But they wound up where they wound up because everything was packed and all the inns were full because everybody had to go back to where their families were from to register so they could be taxed <laughs> by a bunch of corrupt Romans. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's good that this happened back in antiquity, because if it happened today, a lot of us would probably be pretty ticked. If imagine, hey, imagine where your family's from, and now you got to go back there at the end of the year and register, so the IRS can sock you for even more money. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, not so glitzy and ritzy of a story now, is it? <laughs> oh yeah, and if if we wanted the nativity scene to show uh, to be line up with the text a little more, there would have to be an interim scene where Jesus is being circumcised in the temple and uh right. So, no, we're not talking about any kind of this is what it was like on the first Christmas. It's a mixing together of two different seasons. It's kind of more of a visual cliff notes of sorts. And it's what the Lutherans that I'm involved with would call adiaphora, a matter of indifference, something that helps keep things orderly in terms of, hey, you know, here's the key elements of Christmas and Epiphany, but it's not the end of the world if it's not 100% the same everywhere. And that's been the history of these displays. Some of them have had more mundane elements than others. I even heard of some that showed either Mary or Joseph washing diapers in the Jordan River. So it's it's really a matter of just some kind of... So that's the thing. If there's a cave painting that looks like a nativity scene, it's not really that there's any link between the two. It's just they're similar. Oh, and by the way, similar is probably the best word that we can use to describe this cave painting if you've seen it. Because the kid in the painting is not a baby in a manger or anything. It's a kid standing up. And uh, who, what's to say that star in the east couldn't just be a depiction of, you know, the sun? Oh, and by the way, one of the animals is over their heads and stuff. So, really, the Italian researchers are, and anybody else out there who's saying this is some kind of nativity, how is this not jumping to conclusions? But hey, whatever gets people clicking on the story and reading it, right? Getting people all worked up around the holiday season, get them all arguing with each other as if the holidays won't do enough of that in and of themselves with what's happened this year. But it's the media being the media. Post hoc ergo propter hoc. Just because one thing happens after another doesn't mean that the two are automatically related. But don't try teaching logical things like that to people that have been blowing up on Facebook for the last couple of days because of this. Ah, I gotta get myself a popcorn machine. Anywho, 
It was a bit more holiday humbug for me to get to today instead of spending the day talking about this stuff, but uh, let's just say that I am not really concerned about a cave painting that bears some similarities to nativity displays, especially when you're talking about the history of them not really going back to anywhere close to the first century, even as a church tradition. But hey, whatever gets people all worked up in arguing because there's no such thing as bad publicity, right? <laughs> Checkmate media getting people to click away from or tear them away from their presence during the Christmas season to get them all arguing on the internet about a cave painting. <laughs> I, meanwhile, would rather keep my head on straight in this matter. This is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by.